Alrighty, welcome to almost the last video of the chapter. This is section 8.9, factoring perfect squares. So in the previous section, we learned how to factor differences of squares, and here we're going to learn how to factor what's called a perfect square. So first, the vocab word. What is a perfect square trinomial? So trinomial means it has three terms, and then perfect square means it's going to have the form a squared plus or minus 2ab plus, this is b squared, sorry about that formatting, plus b squared. And so it can be factored. So this is the equation or formula that you want to know. And again, just like the previous section, it was the reverse of a formula you already know. Factoring perfect squares is the reverse of a formula you already know. So if you cover up this side and you look right here, this is a shortcut for perfect squares that we learned. How do you multiply out a perfect square? Of course, you had to do a plus b multiply by a plus b. There was no shortcut. Uh, you could not distribute, could not distribute this exponent in uh, because this is a binomial. So the, the method to do it was to multiply it out like this or memorize this shortcut formula. Well, if you've memorized the shortcut formula to multiply it out, then it's the exact same shortcut formula to com condense it back down again. So if you have something here that's called a perfect square, which means the first number squared, the second number squared, and the middle is twice the product of a and b, then you can rewrite it in what's called factored form, just like this. So this is really something that you need to recognize, but you can also um, think of this as just doing some normal factoring, and the result is that you get the same um, thing twice. So let's look at some problem solving tips, and then we'll do some examples. So as with all the sections on factoring, I'm going to keep repeating myself. Always factor out the greatest common factor first. If you don't look for the greatest common factor and you miss one, you'll end up with a problem that's much harder than it should be. So always try to get that greatest common factor first, and then simplify what's left using the harder techniques. <coughs> if the first and last term are both perfect squares, then you want to check the middle number. If it's 2ab, then you know you've got a perfect square. If it's not, you're going to just have to do the old-fashioned factoring. And then the last thing is a, a same reminder that we've had in all the sections. If you have an equation, <coughs> once you factor it and you have something in factored form equal to 0, we want to use that familiar zero product property to break each of these separately and solve. Each one of these separately could equal zero and solve. So let's get some examples uh, done and then we'll be finished with this section pretty quick and easy. Determine whether the trinomial is a perfect square, right, yes or no? If it is, factor it. Okay, so we want to factor it. So we start off with these parentheses just so we know what we're doing. The beginning here is an M m and m, because m times m is m squared, so that's a perfect square. That's also a perfect square, that's 3 times 3. Um, the middle term is a negative 6, okay? Uh, if we put a negative 3 and a negative 3, that will work. So, <coughs> negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 9. So this is a perfect square. We can write it overall as m plus, uh, sorry, 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 that's a typo right there. That should be m minus 3 quantity squared, okay? Uh, let's try this one. This one, I'm just going to write a big fat no, because even though this is a perfect square, this one here is not a perfect square, so this is not going to work out for us. How about this one? This is a tricky one here. This one here is 3 times 3, so that's good. This one here is 5 times 5, so that's good. And now the middle here is that 2 times a, which is going to be 3, times b, which is 5. 2 times 3 times 5 is 30. So that one works, and we can write it as 3n plus 5 quantity squared. The middle term is 2ab. The first term is 3n times 3n. The last term is 5 times 5, so our solution is 3n plus 5 quantity squared. Factor each polynomial if possible. If it cannot be factored, write prime. All right, another example. So here's an example where you look at it and you're like, hey, that's not a perfect square. That's also not a perfect square. However, they have something in common that can be taken out. So they both have a 2. So if we take out a 2, we're left behind x squared minus 36. Now this is a perfect square, it's 1. This is a perfect square, it's 6. And so you can remember from last section we learned the difference of squares factors into a plus b and a minus b. So in this case it's like a is like x and b is like 6. So a plus 6 
and or x plus 6 and x minus 6. And then that 2, anytime you have a common factor that you take out, it just stays in the front uh, as a multiplying coefficient. All right, how about this one here? Um, we want to find uh, 6, 11, and 3. There's no common factor. This is not a perfect square, so we can't factor the um, easy way with a shortcut. And also, the leading coefficient's not a 1, so we're stuck with either breaking the middle term apart or doing the guess and check factoring. So I'm going to go for the guess and check factoring. The last number is a 3, which is 3 times 1. The only possibility is a 3 times 1. The front here, it could be 6 times 1, or it could be 3 times 2. So um, <coughs> let's try 6b and 1b. Now if I multiply these, I get 6. If I multiply these, I get 3. That did not work. Okay. If I put the 6 right here, and the 1 right here, that's no good either because 3 times 6 is 18. So that didn't work. 6 and 1 is out. Let's say try it again and let's try it. So again, I'll put the 3 and the 1 because that's the only possibility. Now let's try a 3 and a 2. If I put a 3 here and a 2 here, let's see what we get. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. 6 and 3 is 9. That doesn't work. So we have our last combination. 3b um, plus 1 and 2b plus 3. Okay, I switched these two places. So now on the outside, I have 3b times 3 is 9, 1 times 2b is 2b, and this 9b on the outside and this 2b on the inside combine together to give me the 11b that I wanted. Okay, so that's my factored form, 3b plus 1 times 2b plus 3. Um, so this helps remind you that um, you can do common factoring, okay, take out whatever they have in common. If you have a difference of squares, you can use the sum times the difference. Um, if they have nothing, you can just do guess and check or breaking apart the middle term. And if they really are a perfect square, like maybe we'll look at this one also since it's a short video. This is a perfect square of 6 times 6. This is a perfect square of 2 times 2. Middle term is negative. Is it 2ab? So 2 times 6 times 2. That's 2 times the a value times the b value. And 2 times 6 times 2 is definitely 24. So the answer is yes. So this is going to factor into 6t. That's the square root of the front piece. Minus, because of the minus sign, and then 2. So this one factored nicely based on the new rule that we just learned factoring perfect squares. And once again, to emphasize the same thing I've been saying all along, any of these that you're solving, anytime you're ever solving a factoring problem, you can always multiply it back out using FOIL or rectangle diagrams or distribution to check and verify that you got the answer right. Um, so you should really get into a habit of proving to yourself that these are correct and not just assuming you're right and then moving on. So um, that's it. See you in class.